Hi and welcome to Arrow's coverage of Infosec 2019. We are once again asking the hard questions of our vendors, finding out what their priorities are into 2020 and how they intend to help our channel to develop to address the ever-changing security landscape. We hope you enjoy this series, and if so, please subscribe. We're back uh, with another podcast E, um, and we've got Rohin from, uh, from Pulse Secure. Would you like to just introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself? Sure, Dave. Uh, thanks for having me. You're more than welcome. Uh, so uh, Pulse Secure uh, is a secure access company. We are on a mission to provide unified secure access solutions and the chief development officer responsible for their products and solutions. Oh, fantastic. So you actually yeah. are at the real cutting edge of, of this technology. Totally, totally. We lead the uh, secure access market. Uh, we are the number one in this market with uh, 20,000 enterprise customers today. So I think a really good um, starting point to add a bit of context around our conversation is, I think secure access, um, everyone remembers it, Who's anyone who's ever worked in an enterprise um, when they had VPNs and those horrible token things that used to change yep. the um, the security access number you needed every 30 seconds. And with with the move to the cloud and the move to cloud services, what is the new role of yeah. secure access? Yeah, no, great question, Dave. I think if you look at how it has morphed, uh, the secure access uh, problem has morphed over the last few years, the applications are no longer in the data center. Right? No. They are in multiple clouds. They are in a private cloud, they are in a public cloud, or multiple public clouds. So the resources are distributed. That's the problem number one. The second problem is there are different types of users. There are employees, there are contractors, there are guest users. And the third dimension of the problem is really the devices. Right? Say, yeah. you know, a user wants to use their choice of devices to get to these resources. Yep. So if you look at the three-dimensional problem, it's a very complex problem. Right? And if you ask a CISO, hey, do you know from which user, uh, uh, which device is he using, and then what access resource is he accessing, and what is causing a breach? The most likely answer is no. We don't yeah. know. Right? That is the complex problem it has morphed into, and that's what we have done as well to really transform our product portfolio into a secure access solution. So we are no longer a VPN company. We call ourselves a secure access company, where you see uh, we do device management, we do user management, we do access management, we do application availability, all in a unified solution. We do network access control, all in a unified solution. So that what happens is if you talk to a CISO, he has a single pane of glass and a policy control where he can decide what users, what devices, and what resources can be accessed yep. and what not. That's how it has morphed into. And and that is a unified platform, whether you're using on-premise resources, whether you're totally. going off to you know, Office 365 or Salesforce or... Yeah, totally, totally. Perfect. So it's a unified platform. So customers uh, who have traditional deployments, they continue to use the same platform, but that has been extended. Uh, so your resources can be across clouds. Your devices can be network devices. It can, you know, devices can be anything, right? But we support mobile devices, access from mobile devices, access from desktop devices, and so on. And the users can be any. Right? There is a centralized policy engine from where you can set the policies. That's why we call it a unified secure access suite. Uh, if you go to our website, that's what we predominantly talk about. Fantastic. So as far as the unified secure access suite is concerned, I mean, what sort of um, customer use cases, what kind of uh, real world implementations? I mean, can you talk to because often when we talk about this, it sounds quite abstract, talking about the technology and, yep. and secure access. But can you give us some sort of really nice um, examples of where this has sort of been utilized and sort of some customer success stories? Yeah, so we do have 90% uh, of Fortune 2000 customers today with us. Wow. Uh, we have 20,000 enterprise customers. And a lot of is channel-driven, MSSP-driven business, right? Uh, so if you look at the typical use cases, most of the customers are in hybrid IT or multi-cloud IT, right? That's the typical deployment. And uh, they all have desktop devices, mobile devices, Android, iOS devices. Yep. All of them have uh, guest users, employees, and so on. Uh, so the typical use, use cases are all around access from various types of devices, uh, availability of applications, uh, ability to control the network devices that are accessing all these applications and resources, 
providing visibility and compliance and governance, those are the biggest use cases for us. So walk us through um, a customer journey. So essentially, what would be a customer's problem definition? What, what kind of... Um, so, you know, the, the, the podcast that we, we run is designed yeah. to essentially help our partners to be able to take a, a story and go and talk to a customer sure. about it. So sure. what kind of things would a, a customer look for for secure access issues? Because uh, maybe I'm being a bit naive, but I mean, from, from my perspective, I look sure. at sort of the services that, that I use on a daily yeah. basis yeah. and I log into them via my sure. username and password and, and, and that's it. Totally. So, where would when would you start to wrap this layer of, yeah. of extra sort of connectivity security into yeah it? so totally if you take it it all starts with simple use case like hey, you want to access applications that are in your data center yep or access applications like office 365 which are on a cloud then what happens is you do a single sign on uh, there is uh, login capabilities that are there is automatic integration into the active directory yep where you are seamlessly accessing those applications it starts off with that but when you then get into a, uh, monitoring the network and understanding the network infrastructure, then what happens is you want to know what all devices are accessing various resources, right? We call it device profiling, device visibility, right? It expands into those use cases. Then it expands into other use cases like application availability. Like you are accessing those applications, are those applications highly available? This is where our load balancing technology or ADC technology comes into picture, right? But then, if you want to have fine-grained policies around device management, what type of devices you want to manage, and you want to enroll the devices and so on, then you get into a device management solution. So it always starts with one use case, but it always is a land and expand journey. As a customer starts using our access solution, accessing different applications, then it gets into, okay, now I need to understand what devices are getting accessed, how do I put policies and control around uh, devices, so it you know, expands into a complete yeah. secure access. That's really uh, interesting. Suite. I, I yeah. must admit, I wasn't expecting you to say that the, the suite of products was that wide. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, quite wrongly, obviously, I've always had Pulse Secure down as being sort of a VPN endpoint almost. Yeah. There's little boxes that you see in the data right, center right. <laughs> that provide that ultra secure sort of VPN out right, to, right, right. to endpoints. Yeah. I didn't realize the portfolio had expanded or maybe it's always been there yeah. to do all no, it of has these expanded other quite a bit over the last few years i mean uh, yeah. uh, we have a uh, we had a new ceo sudhakar ramakrishna who came in four years back yep. and ever since he came on board uh, there were new acquisitions done and the product portfolio expanded quite a bit into a complete unified access solution and the company has been growing extremely well uh, we are private equity owned but the company has been growing extremely well uh, and the good part is we have a lot of marquee enterprise customers with us, uh, including the top cloud providers, uh, <laughs> our, our customers today, who use as far as the secure access solutions for their enterprise. So that way it that's, has been that's a... That's quite, um, quite a sort quite of... A, um, yeah, feat for us. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So talk to me about, um, obviously, when, when you implement secure access, yeah. um, it, it can be, it's quite a complex thing to try and understand the use of a particular endpoint, the use of that particular connection. Right. So how do you implement things like zero trust and, and, and make it so that it actually doesn't end up breaking everything in, in, the, in the way, in between sort of the end, well, the user of the service and yeah. the service itself? Yeah, so what we have done, uh, we recently launched our zero trust SDP, software defined perimeter solution. Okay. Uh, this has a controller technology. I mean, it follows a classic SDP architecture. There's a controller technology and there are gateways. So what happens is we have extended the, the platform, the unified secure access platform that we have to do seamless authentication. There is a centralized uh, policy uh, authentication controller built in uh, where you can say, hey, these are the devices, these are the users that are to be allowed and they get authenticated and they can access all the gateways and applications, right? That's what we have done to extend it. We're trying to make it even more easier by making it a zero touch solution in a longer run yeah. so that customers don't have to even install anything, right? Ideally, they go to a portal, sign up for uh, a service, yeah, yeah. and then they can go and manage all the devices, users, and applications in one place, right? Fantastic. That's what we're evolving to, uh, but we have a fantastic product that's you know being deployed at thousands of customers. So the nice uh, thing is if people are buying into Pulse Secure today, there's a 
really strong roadmap into the future of where totally. where the product's going to go and yeah. the features and functionalities and integrations. Yeah, ex extremely strong uh, vision and roadmap because uh, the devices are growing, the users are growing, applications are growing, and they're all spread across different clouds. And if you look at CISOs and cloud admins as new personas, they all want a single pane of glass. Absolutely. From where they want to manage all these devices, users, and applications to avoid all the cyber security breaches. Uh, because if you talk about breaches today, they're happening from devices or users or through different applications, right? But if imagine if you can have a single pane of glass where you can solve all these cyber security breaches in one place, that will be very powerful, right? That's what we are uh, marching towards. That's fantastic. That's yeah. fantastic. So as far as, um, obviously, Pulse Secure is, is the sort of software-defined perimeter. I like yeah. that, but I've never actually heard of the software-defined perimeter before. That's a really, yeah. appreciate that's probably, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not security by default, so it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the host, right? Sure. I'm, allow I'm allowed to be impressed by, uh, yes. by things that are pretty normal to <laughs> people sure. like yourself. Um, but how are you working with sort of other parts of the technology? So obviously, if I bring your product in, yes. um, how do you sit and play? How, how do you work as a solution in, in the wider context of the rest great, of my great question, Dave. I think so. One of the things that is very critical for us is third-party integrations, yeah, that's especially yeah. when you have firewalls or when you are in a VPC, uh, when let's say you, are, you know, want to have applications within your VPC yeah. or in a different cloud and so on. So the integrations become super important and we have a, a third party integration framework where we are plugging different integrations and that's part of our unified platform as well. So we're constantly adding third party integrations. Fantastic. And we're also adding a lot of IoT uh, disco device discovery solutions into our platform. Uh, so that what happens is now you have one pane of glass where you can not only discover traditional network devices, but you can also discover IoT devices, right? So that's- That's uh, interesting. So IoT is a huge part of our business. Um, yeah. Because obviously, pretty much about sixty percent of all of our revenue comes from our global components business. Sure. Um, and obviously, they are they're heavily, heavily focused in on on IoT. Sure. Um, and I think the single biggest limiting factor today to the success of our business is the ability to really rest it as a as, a, as an IT organization or as, a, as sure. an enterprise, being able to turn and go. If we put all this technology in, yes, we know for a fact that it's secure because yes. it's fundamentally not. Totally. Let's be honest. Totally. Let's be honest. Totally. So, give us the exact sort of how does your solution help if I'm if I'm implementing sort of traditional um, IoT that hasn't really been designed with security in mind? It's, yeah. It's a you know it's a piece of OT. It's a air conditioning system. It's an intelligent right. lighting system. It's a right. gateway. It's a. Yeah. So so what happens is for us it's like any other device. Just like we discover network devices like firewalls, router switches, and so on, we can discover OT devices as well. So what happens is from a uh, security organization or a network organization, network admins, security admins, they can define policies to decide. First of all, it all starts with discovery or profiling, understanding what is all in the network, what are all connected to the internet or network, right? what is being passed through. right? Once you understand that, you can set policies to allow certain devices, not allow certain devices. right? It all starts with discovery and visibility. Right. And then obviously once you've actually got the discovery and the visibility, how then do you, you actually can, secure the access? Then you can put controls to allow or block a certain device or give certain device an access so that it gets seamless secure access is yeah. one good use case. And the second use case is if you look at some of the, uh, where uh, some of these IoT markets are going, like uh, some of the car industries, like smart connected cars and yeah. so on, uh, they want to push a lot of data, right? They want to seamlessly connect to different gateways and push data. If you look at it, another seamless secure access use case is evolving in that market because they don't want to just push data out no, to the internet, it. but they want to uh, securely send the data. So if uh, I buy to, a car, yeah. it might actually have your product in it. Uh, totally, totally, totally. That's insane. Totally, totally. That's insane, and I must admit, so totally. we've, we've had a couple of other people come on and, and we've had this discussion a few times, but yeah. it's like um, a lot of these industries when we start to see the traditional sort of Enterprise uh, security products start to get put into the these particular you know these fields. Right. So you know when we started seeing enterprise security being adopted Correct. and implemented in the cloud, totally. the cloud went from dev test to True. production. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm really excited to hear that you yeah. know the likes of yourselves are now working with these IoT organisations yes. and these car manufacturers who are yeah. putting all these computing technologies and connectivity technologies totally. into their devices totally. to provide you know the consumer with a level of security that they 
I think expect by default, but don't necessarily realize quite how Correct. behind exactly. these man these organizations are. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I, I, this is where, especially the device manufacturers or car ma manufacturers and others worry more than the end user because the end users expect that it's secure by default, yeah, exactly. you know, right? Uh, or just like your mobile phone is pushing data out constantly, you are yeah. assuming that your device is safe and secure, right? So this is where uh, the secure access suite is getting built in um, into a lot of devices. This is where uh, we supporting a lot of uh, different types of devices like iOS devices, Android devices, desktops, laptops, uh, different types of devices or IoT devices become super important because it's like enabling different types of devices and things to seamlessly uh, get secure access, right? And the complete set of problems that can be solved yeah. in that journey. So how do you actually go and have, how do you go and have that first conversation with a, with a car manufacturer? Because obviously a car manufacturer yeah. cares, because uh, I'm just fascinated with the sort of the process and the thinking behind right. how you'd actually go and have a conversation with someone whose primary concern is fuel economy, safety, yes. and then, you know, aesthetics. Yes. How do you then go and say, uh, what are the sort of steps you take and what are the sort of co questions you would ask to start to yeah. get them into a, a security-centric mindset? Yeah, so I think great question, Dave. So if you look at it, I think one thing that has happened in the market is uh, there is definitely a lot of maturity even on the customer side to know that they have OT devices that want to talk to the network or talk to the internet. Right. Uh, so, in fact, a lot of times the questions come from the customer. Say, we have uh, access, uh, secure access, or your solutions that from various devices. Can you enable it for for other OT devices? Right. So sometimes uh, it's, it's starting from the customer, and other times, you know, when we go have conversations with CISOs or um, you know other OT organizations in the company, we start asking these questions around. Hey, do you know how many devices do you have on your network? And a lot of times the answer is, hey, we know that there are maybe 50 devices or 100 devices. We tell them, hey, do you want to use our technology to even profile and discover how many devices are there? And a lot of times we ask them to install this for free. Uh, the first step is discovery. We end up discovering 10 times more devices than what they assumed. If they say 60, we end up discovering 600 of them <laughs> or 1,000 of them. The moment they discover that, then automatically they're concerned about the security what, what are they actually doing, Which de what, are, what devices should be sending data, not sending data, and so on. So that's uh, the discovery part, uh, which we also call as our profiler. That has become a critical piece in terms of the landing. So you can uh, actually use that discovery part as a sales tool in itself. Yes, totally, totally. Fantastic. And uh, we, we, a lot of times we give it for free for customers to try it. Once they try it, they get hooked onto the whole secure access suite, because they now know that there are a lot of uh, they want to understand this three-dimensional problem that we're talking about, yeah. devices, users, and resources. Now they want to solve it. Fantastic. The yeah. ultimate land and expand. Yes, totally, totally. Fantastic. Well, look, thank yeah. you ever so much for coming on. Sure. Really appreciate it. Sure. Really thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, thanks very much thank for having me. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Please come back again next week for the next installment of our exciting coverage from InfoSec 2019. See you then.